Fashions are the latest trend. I'll put some on my feet for you all to read. Yeah, Matt Billen, man. Yeah, very uh, super nice guy. You I didn't heard meet he- him in LA at the comedy store? I don't think so. He was a door guy at the comedy store when you guys oh, were there. Oh, I may have met him, but I didn't. I think you, yeah. I maybe. think we spoke to him, but I didn't. Oh, okay. fuck, now I feel like an asshole. Oh, he was, a, he was man, he was like, uh, I mean, oh, when I got to L.A., the fuck. thing is L.A. sucks, right? Everyone's a fucking asshole at first, or everyone's trying to make it so they all, like, you know, they're not they're not friendly, as friendly. Yeah. He was a fucking nice guy, like super nice, super friendly I never even asked him. He was like, the first time I, uh, you know, I bumped into him, he was like, dude, you got to fucking, I'll get you up, man. I'll get you up. I'll get you a spot, you know, super fucking. And man, there was the the time that somebody almost killed everyone at the comedy store with his car. This kid was high on drugs and he just, he came flying into the parking lot in like a Nissan Z. He was like a rich kid. Uh, he was there like the weekend before. And we were all hanging out and he was just like a rich kid just buying everyone drinks. And everyone's like, who's this fucking kid? And then Billen told me, he's like, come do the Monday, man. I'll get you up at the store. And so I showed up and this kid fucking out of nowhere, I was in the back corner by the comedy store sign and he fucking just, all he was like tires screeching. And there was, there was like comics lined up all in front because Mondays are just all packed. They were all lined up. Everyone was outside and he just came barreling into the parking lot, like tires screeching flying right through and he just rolled right in and smashed into the back wall. He was high on, I don't even know what man. And Matt Billen without even skipping a beat, dude, the car just came through the the side. Like, you know, the comedy store on the yeah, side, yeah. there's the the driveway that goes to the back. I was standing right and there. And then on the other side of it, it's where that hotel is. There's right. The, yeah. So the car came right into the parking lot with it before the car even hit, like the car just hit the wall and Billen comes flying, like bolting after the car. And, like, I couldn't believe my eyes, like, what I'm seeing. Because, like, things like this in L.A. happen. It just happens in, like, a, a flash of a second. You're like, holy crap. So he smashes into the wall. Bill and comes bolting and just jumps in because the kid was going to – he was trying to put the car in reverse because he smashed into the back retaining wall. And he was high. Like, he didn't know what he was doing. Bill and jumped in, grabbed him, and pulled the kid right out of the car and was like, you fucking almost killed people. He dragged him out of the car. And nobody credits that, but he probably saved lives because if that guy had reversed, if he were reversed, he would have smashed into tons of people and he would, who knows what he would have done and damage he would have done, you know, like at the comedy store, he could have destroyed the whole place with a car, you know? So it was, Bill and just dragged him out of the car, totally neutralized the whole situation, punched him. (laughs) And then everybody just like kind of broke it up. The bouncers all ran and grabbed uh, grabbed them and like separate them, but they held the kid because the kid was gonna, was trying to run, and they held them until the cops came. But Bill and like totally saved it, like ballsy, like that guy was so nice and never thought of anybody, like what never is- thought about himself, never thought about himself, thought about everyone else, never thought about anyone, like you know any anything happening to him. Which it's sad that, you know, like he took his own life. I don't... Do we know why or... I think he was like, I I, I think it was, uh, I think it was Brian O'Gorman or someone wrote a thing on Facebook that I saw that was pretty, you know, he was just frustrated with the industry. He was frustrated with, I think there was a big thing, again, at uh, in in New Brunswick at the Hubcap Comedy Festival. Okay. He, he came, fuck, dude, I remember that too, because I was in LA at the same time. We were both... In LA, I came down, I was in New Brunswick. He was coming in later and there was a snowstorm. He spent like, I think he spent 24 hours at the airport in Montreal because every flight was getting canceled. He couldn't get out. He showed up an hour before the show and just, and he was living in a, in the airport for over 24 hours. He gets there, he sh- goes to his hotel. I don't even think he showered, just dropped his stuff and ran straight to the show. Goes up on stage does his bit, does his whole bit on on trans sports. <laughs> and it was fucking hilarious. I was watching it from the back of the room because I had to run to another show and I just, I knew he came late and I was like, okay, let me watch him. So I watched him do this joke and it was fucking hilarious. I don't remember the whole joke, but I know it was along the lines, something with like, there was a huge stat of like how many uh, uh, men are, you know, trans women are are now getting into women's sports, right? So now it's men transitioning to women, they're in women's sports. So he goes, a lot of people don't like it because it's unfair. 
uh, or they think it's an unfair advantage, but he goes, I like it because that means women's sports are going to be watchable in a few years. Yeah, that's funny. Which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. And then I left and I had a show and I did a show and then I go on my phone like an hour later and I just see Facebook exploding and everyone's like, fuck you, Matt Billen. You're transphobic. Oh You're a my fucking- God. So what happened was Shanty who I don't know if you remember Shanty oh, the was rapist. a trans, trans comic who in the end eventually was found to like bully and abuse. Sexually harass yeah. people or some shit like other, that. Yeah. Other women or whatever she would date. I don't know what the fucking terminology is. But fucking yeah, just, just went off on him and like left him a note on his shit. Wrote something like, uh, I don't know, it was like just wrote this whole note like fuck you, you're transphobic and all this shit and left it there, took a picture and posted it on Facebook and was like fuck this guy making transphobic jokes and What's all this transphobic shit. About- Dude, I, nobody, nobody fucking knew and I think that bothered him a lot because I mean, yes, of course it did, man. Dude, the guy was in a fucking living in an airport, went from like thinking, hey, I just fucking let me just come up here, do my jokes. I'm going to go relax. And then just all of Facebook, all these comedians just started trying to take him down. The open micers. Dude, he was distraught. Like I saw him the next day and he really wanted to do the podcast. At the time I was doing a podcast with Mike Patterson and I had all my gear and we were, we were recording some episodes and he was like, dude, just let me have, he's like, have us both on, like, let us talk it out. Like, I don't know why she hates me. Like, let us talk it out. Like, yeah. there's no reason for her to hate me. And I was like, listen, man, I was, I, I regret not doing it. But at the time it was so fucking shaky that I was like, listen, dude, just don't fucking give it any attention. It's all bullshit. Like they're just, they, they love the attention. And and the festivals, like not Moncton, because I got to give them credit, they fucking kept it super neutral. They even rebooked Billin on on a different show because I think he was on another show with Shanty. They rebooked, they kept them separate. They respected everybody. They didn't fucking do anything that was like, oh, Billin, you're out of here. You ruined, you know? So they were pretty neutral and they were great about all of it. But there are festivals and bookers and stuff that favor that bullshit. I don't know if they still do, but at that time they were favoring like anyone that whines about my feelings were hurt or nobody respected me or, you know, any of that shit. So it, I felt like Bill and just got pummeled and felt scared about it. And I was like, listen, dude, just what scene is this? This is Toronto scene. Toronto. Yeah. So he was just like, yeah, he kind of felt fucking bad about it. And he really wanted to talk it out and like show that he wasn't. An, and he's not. He's the sweetest. He was the fucking nicest dude. Uh, but it just felt like, listen, man, we shouldn't give it more attention than it's already getting. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. I know you. I know you're not a hateful person. We but all he know didn't you. have an outlet. You know, the problem is that he didn't have an outlet. It would have been good for him to do any podcast. Just to so get that people it. who don't know can... But see who people, he is. At that time, man, it's, I don't know if it, it's still kind of, but I think people are kind of over the bullshit of the hype of it all. But at that time, it's like, you couldn't, you couldn't show people. Like the more you try to show them like, no, he's actually a good guy. You're like, yeah, right. He's homophobic. It's just cause you're his buddy. You know, oh, like so they don't stupid. think like, no, I know this guy. He's the sweetest person ever. Uh, they don't think like that. So I, and, and I, I think in the post, yeah, Brian O'Gorman wrote something about, he didn't end up getting, he was supposed to do, I think it was just for laughs because he won, I think he won top comic, Sirius XM top comic or something. He was supposed to do a, whatever it was, he was supposed to get a festival spot for that. But because everything that went down, he never got his spot. Uh, so he just felt like the industry fucking hated him. Then when COVID hit and you're trying to book shit and there's nothing going on. I mean, I don't know what at the end was his ultimate thing, but from what Brian wrote, that was a big part that really bothered him for a long time. And to know that I was there and I saw it all and I know this guy, it fucking hurt to see that because you're like, this guy's a fucking, I can't believe that hurt. Like it shouldn't have bothered him, but he was that nice of a guy that it fucking bothered him that much. So if that is the... The fucking story. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty sad because, uh, yeah, he was a good dude. He's definitely a good guy. One of the good ones that fucking, uh, you know, had to put up with a lot of bullshit and uh, didn't deserve it. He deserved, like, success. He was a really funny comic. And yeah. the, all that abuse online fucked with him. It fucked with him, yeah. It definitely, and I could see how it could fuck with him because uh, now bookers were just like, they take that side because they're scared. 
they take the side of like, just don't, we don't, whatever's getting taken down. We don't want, we yeah. don't want to be against it, you know? So we, we got to just like be neutral, like try and try and, you but know, they're not favor. neutral. It's yeah. They favor. They're not neutral. They're favoring the others. Now they're, they're kind of going, okay, well we can't just keep babying shit, you know? But it was a wild. I'm surprised he lost the, the festival, losing the festival spot. That's that's. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it had anything. Festival. I don't know if it had anything to do with it or not. I don't. I don't know. But that's what I. That's what uh, was written about it all, and it kind of makes a little bit of sense. And it sucks, you know. Like I. I just hope that moving forward, we kind of like understand that jokes are jokes, and people are fucking trying to make people laugh. That's the ultimate goal. And there are people that make people laugh in one way and there are people that make people laugh in other ways. It doesn't mean one's better than the other. It's just literally respect all of them and let them all live in their own spaces. Yeah. You know, like the festival, like Moncton, like Hubcap did, they just separated them. They go, well, listen, clearly they're not two comics that should be on the same show, but they're both funny. Let's put them on. Well, <laughs> are they both they, funny? Yeah. Well, they, I've never seen the, the 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 one that they were saying was sexual harassment. People were abusing people, whatever the fuck. I've never seen, like, I've only seen videos of people talking shit about I, it. Yeah, it just it, it, Abba, it, Abba and Preach had released a video of uh of call in the beginning of calling her out. Well, yeah. I think didn't they do that video was about that was about that whole incident if I'm not mistaken. Or no, 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 they did it about her abusing people. After. Yeah, I didn't know until you just told me about this. Yeah. I, I I thought that the guy had went through something because I saw I think it was Matt Hughes. Okay. Said something about the Toronto scene being toxic and they bullied him online. And then I didn't give much talk because I didn't know the content. I didn't know these people. First of all, I didn't even realize that he was the door guy. At the, I didn't realize that I probably saw him at the, at the store. I didn't even yeah. think about that. Um, but now that you're telling me this, it's because it's stuff I've brought up to him too. We've talked about, you know, we have thick skin. We could take, we don't care. Like we fight sometimes when a con, you know, some comics Ye that yeah. had said similar stuff about, uh, about us like online and we just ridiculed them and fight, like, I don't care, yeah. but that's not everyone. Yeah. And I think part of the reason why I don't care, not just the way we're built, but also cause I have an outlet. I right. could explain myself. Right. If there's misinformation, I right. could talk about it and address it. But if the guy has no outlet and the only, the only scenario coming out is of him being uh, transphobic, homophobic, racist, murder, whatever, and he can't defend himself. You feel naked. You yeah. you feel unarmed. Yeah, that's that's a shitty feeling. That's a scary, and, scary and thing. Yeah, and then the way you don't know where to navigate it too, because like every who do I tell? No yeah. one even wants to give me a platform that's to it. address it. So the only thing coming out, yeah, it, it, the narrative coming out is that I'm X thing. And if I had a chance to explain myself, yeah, maybe it wouldn't be that way. Yeah, it's a weird business, man. Where like you can where that could happen, where you're you're funny, you deserve work, but you don't get it because they're just scared. Yeah, you know, they're just scared. I mean, it's happened to me. It's happened to him. It's, it's happened to all of us. It's happened to everyone now. Like a lot of the comics that are just, and at the end of the day, it'll all fucking just smooth out and keep going and everyone will just. You'll find it, your own. It sucks to go through it. It yeah. sucks that we have to do that. Like we can't, it feels like now it's not as, as, as it once was, but I mean, like I said, we all could be in the same fucking business. You all have your own platforms or your own crowds and yeah. that's it. Like, why are people trying to take other people down? Clearly doesn't work well. I mean, we ended up with a dead guy who is fucking talented and funny and great. And we ended up with somebody who's not funny, who ended up fucking abusing people and doing a bunch of shit. Still but around. they got festival spots and jobs and work. And the nice guy who is funny fucking got nothing. That's... That's where it's got to even out. And you got to go, listen, they're both equally in their own respectable ways doing whatever it is that they're doing in this business. Well, one of them was sexual them abuse, so I don't know about that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah, bad example. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, I think it's, yeah, it's just a, it's just a fucked up way of, uh, this business sometimes is, is weird. You need thick skin. Yeah. You got to let it go. Sometimes, like, things don't go your way. Uh, fucking just let it keep plugging, man. Because it, it'll, it'll iron, like, it'll smooth itself out. But sometimes it takes a fucking long time. It's if you can get through it.